नमस्कार दिस इज डॉक्टर दीप्ति वारेकू डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ फिजियोथेरेपी डॉल्फिन पीजी इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ बायोमेडिकल एंड नेचुरल साइंसेस टुडेज लेक्चर इज अबाउट फ्लेक्सा टेंडन इंजरीज द फ्लेक्सा टेंडन्स मेनली इंक्लूड द फ्लेक्सा डिजिटोरम सुपरफिशियालिस एंड फ्लेक्सा डिजिटोरम प्रोफांडस द फ्लेक्सा डिजिटोरम सुपरफिशियालिस इज इंसर्टेड इनटू द मिडिल फैलनिक्स एंड द फ्लेक्सा डिजिटोरम प्रोफांडस इज इंसर्टेड ऑनटू द डिस्टल फैलनिक्स the injury to these two tendons will be included here we will be going through anatomy the nutrition value healing diagnosis techniques then the contraindications and the zones of injuries and the post op rehab before going into the injury let us see what are the flexor tendon zones which are present on the palmar aspect of our hand we have mainly the five zones the first zone is distal to the superficialis tendon zone 2 is distal to the palmar crease of pip zone 3 lies over the palm zone 4 within the carpal tunnel zone 5 forearm at the forearm proximal to the carpal tunnel so we also have got the pulleys directing these two tendons which we have uh, already done in the biomechanics lecture we have the annular pulleys and the cruciate pulleys lying in this the early in flexor tendon sheath the flexor digitorum superficialis divides and passes around fdp tendon the two portions of fds re reunite at a point called as camphor chiasma the fds tendon usually arises from single muscle bundles and acts independently there is often a common muscle origin for several fdp tendons with the result that there is simultaneous flexion of multiple digits now going to the blood supply of these tendons from blood supply is from the segmental branches of the paired digital arteries which enter the tendon through first the long and short vinacula and at the osseous insertions there is uh, synovial fluid diffusion occurring uh, just along with these blood supply levels the blood supply of tendons is very important to know because there are certain avascular zones like in fds there are over the proximal phalanx and in fdp over the middle phalanx the nutritional vital for rapid healing minimization of adhesion and restoration of gliding are the two important aspects that has to be considered for the blood supply of the tendons next is the excursion of the fdp and fds up to 9 cm of flexor tendon excursion may be required to produce composite wrist and digital flexion while only 2.5 cm of excursion is required for full digital flexion with the wrist stabilized in neutral positions now we move to the tendon healing there are two forms of tendon healing mainly occur in flexor digitorum superficialis and flexor digitorum profundus first is the intrinsic healing and second is the extrinsic healing the intrinsic healing relies on sin on synovial fluid for nutrition and occurs only between the tendon ends it occurs without the direct blood flow to the tendons the extrinsic healing depends on the formation of adhesions between the tendons and the surrounding tissue providing a blood supply and fibroblast but unfortunately it also prevents the tendon from gliding now there are mainly the phases of healing first is as we all know the inflammatory phase the second the fibroblastic and third the remodeling phase now adhesion formation is very important in this healing purpose healing that is largely based on intrinsic cellular activity will result in fewer and less dense adhesions there are certain factors which influence the formation of adhesions like the trauma ischemia tendon immobilization gapping at the repair site sheath resection now we move to the diagnosis alteration in the normal resting pos pos posture of the fingers has to be monitored we have to perform the functional tests of fds and fdp lacerations on the palmar aspect of the fingers almost always injure the fd before fds that has to be taken care a careful sensory evaluation is mandatory before going into proper diagnosis and planning the treatment pre operative treatment includes so uh, severed flexor tendon that has to be taken care we have to see that the flexor tendons ends will retract well away 
from the laceration site especially when the digit is in flexion at the time of the injury so flexor tendon let's talk about flexor tendon repair first we'll see what are the contraindications when there are severe multiple tissue injuries to the involved fingers when the wounds are badly contaminated when there are there have been significant skin loss over the flexor system or there is inability of the patient to cooperate with the rehabilitation team some concomitant fractures or neurovascular injuries are not necessarily contraindicated to primary or delayed primary repair so there are certain facts which has to be taken care like flexor tendon repair is not a surgical emergency it is proved that equal or better results can be achieved by delayed primary repairs also better to repair both the tendons rather than treating fdp alone now we will see what are the surgical incisions which are mainly done incisions should not compromise the viability of the skin flaps and when healed will not create contractures or cosmetically unsightedly scars zigzag or mid axial incisions are mainly preferred so what are the ideal repairs which are easy placements of the sutures in the tendon we have got secure suture knots there are smooth junctures of te tendon ends we have got minimal gapping at the repair site if there is minimal interference with the vascularity of the tendons which is very important and if it is strong enough to stand early motion stress how can we provide this by minimal uh, dissection and handling tendon opposition without gapping early protected mobilization these three aspects have to be taken care so these are the basic core suture techniques which are done first you can see the bunnell stitch second the criss cross stitch third the mason allen stitch fourth the robertson and alcatan interlock stitch then see the kessler's and modified kessler's and then the tajima modified of kessler stitch with double loop at the repair site the sheath repair is also considered very important but it can be conflicting lab and clinical studies so what are the advantages of this sheath repair first the barrier to the formation of extrinsic adhesions and then the quicker return of the synovial nutrition which is very good advantage then there is better tendon sheath biomechanics seen in a sheath repair but there are certain disadvantages also like technically it is difficult and it may narrow and restrict the tendon gliding which may affect its movement in later stages there are lots of suture materials which could be used it depends on the surgeon and the uh, type of injury and type of suture which we have to do that we choose which material has to be chosen the strength of the tendon repair is proportional to the number of the sutures that stand across the site repair the number of the sutures in the repair site should be minimized repairs are stronger when the core sutures are placed dorsally it is very important now if there are zone 1 injuries we can go for two types of repairs first is the direct repair if the laceration is more than 1 cm for fdp incision insertion and then the tendon advancement if the laceration is less than 1 cm for insertion the for what is the direct repair this there is usually little difficulty in finding the proximal tendon end which is retained in the finger by its vernaculum because it retracts back and can usually be located in the proximal phalanx when exposing the distal stem the entire a4 pulley should be preserved here the proximal tendon is retrieved passed under the a4 pulley in this technique then there is the next technique the tendon advancement when the distal stump is inefficient to hold a suture the proximal fdp stump may be retracted by first elevating an osteoperosteal flap from the base of the distal phalanx and then drilling an oblique hole beneath the flap directed so as to penetrate the dorsal cortex just beneath the proximal finger nail to stitch it back then a double arm that is the needles 3o suture is placed in the proximal tendon stump and pass through the bone hole tie the suture over and felt it should be felt over like a button another alternative is to use suture anchors when possible the tendon attachment should be supplemented by sutures through the adjacent sheath or periosteum these are the zone 1 injuries next we move to the zone 2 injuries 
the zone 2 is a no man's land it is difficult to treat here so we the sections proceed with identifications and protections of the digital nerves and arteries it is necessary to open either the c1 that is between a2 and a3 or c2 which is between a3 and a4 cruciate synovial sheets always restore the normal uh, relation between the two tendons then the proximal tendon retrieval try to milk the tendon with the wrist flexed here we mainly use morrison and martin method that is the single skin hook is carefully inserted into the sheath then the hook is turned towards the tendon when it is secured there to the tendon withdrawal of the hook should be retrieved both the tendons we have other techniques like we have got mcgrother's technique a small catheter is passed into the sheath and is delivered proximally into a small wound in the palm just proximal to the a1 pulley the catheter is sutured to both the tendons 2 cm proximal to a1 pulley which is then pulled distally to deliver the tendon into the synovial window these are the techniques the picturization of the technique you can see first placement of the catheters here in this diagram then there are partial lacerations partially served tendons should not be repaired if at least 40% of the tendon remains intact over a, there is a study in a journal of hand surgery published in 2000 which says that over a 5 year period 15 patients with zone 2 partial repair tendon lacerations that were larger large than half the width of the tendon were treated conservatively if present the cause of the triggering was determined and eliminated by trimming any bevelled tendon edge the result were excellent in such cases then the post operative management the post operative management are different methods we will see this in our next slides where we will see the uh, boyer's a uh, preoperative classifications and its post operative treatments then the durans protocol scanans protocols which will be followed and we will be also dealing with some modified duran protocols for the tendon injuries in later slides now there are clinerts protocol also which combines dorsal extension blocks with rubber band traction proximal to the wrist originally it included a nylon uh, loop placed through the nail and around the nail this passively flexes the fingers and patient actively extends within the limit of the splint this is the cleaners protocol you can see here this was the initial protocol which we we used to use even now it is being used somewhere then the durons protocol at surgery a dorsal extension block splint is applied which uh, blocks the uh, extension and the wrist is placed at 20 to 30 degrees of flexion mcp joints at 50 to 60 degrees of flexion and ip joints are kept straight like here this is a dorsal blocking splint mainly used in durans protocol modified durans protocol and even in canons protocol there are complications there are joint contractures in these protocols additions could be seen it is very difficult to rehabilitate patient post the removal of the splints sometimes ruptures or bowstrings of the tendons are also seen there is common infection which could be seen so uh, we could see that these were the basic tendon injuries how they are occurring and how we are trying to 